for this is example 14 from the differentiation topic and I'm going to do example 15 with it because they're not too long. Uh, example 13 we looked at differentiating log functions, basic log functions. So these two examples are um, differentiation problems where uh, we're having to apply the product, the quotient rule where we find log functions and other uh, functions too. So let's look at example 14, the function that we're looking at is sine x times the natural log of x and there are two functions which are multiplying together so it would be appropriate to use the product rule to find the derivative so for a given function sine x log x we can see that the derivative would follow the rule u dash v plus u v dash that's our product rule as long as we define u as sine x and v as log x. We can do these quick differentiations. Sine x differentiates to cos x and log x we've just seen differentiates to 1 over x. Basic functions to differentiate on their own and we're then going to feed them into our product rule. So the derivative is u dash v, so that's cos x multiplied by log x, cos x log x, plus u v dash is sin x multiplied by 1 over x. Another way of doing that is just straight away writing sin x divided by x. And having a look at that, there's absolutely nothing we can do to factorise that or simplify that in any way. And therefore, that's our answer. Having a look at uh, example 15. Again, we've got a function which includes a natural log uh, term within it. We've got log of cos x divided by x squared. That becomes my function, then it's quite clear we have a fraction involved, a rational uh, function, which means that we need to use the quotient rule. Or we could use the product rule, but it's easier to use the quotient rule. Um, so if we remind ourselves of the quotient rule, it would be u dash v minus u v dash over v squared as long as we define u as the top or numerator, the log of cos x, and v is the denominator, x squared. Our derivatives, now watch this one here, this is the trickiest part, the log of cos x. Um, it's a function inside another function, it's cos x is inside function, and the outside function or the second function is basically log x. So chain rule, differentiate the outside function. So log x differentiates to 1 over whatever the inside function is. So it's 1 over cos x multiplied by chain rule, the derivative of the term in the brackets, negative or cos x differentiates to negative sine x. Which means that overall we've got negative sine x over cos x, which hopefully you can see we can simplify to negative tan x. And we haven't forgotten uh, v over at the edge here. Uh, the original value for v is x squared and v dash is 2x. So, we can apply all that to our product, or to our quotient rule, uh, u dash v, u dash v, negative tan x multiplied by x squared, so that would give you negative x squared tan x, move that down a little bit minus u v dash, u is log of cos x and v dash is 2x, 
Now just watch that again as a minus uh, sign here. So we've got 2x times the log of cos x. If in doubt, keep everything in brackets. Uh, divided by v squared, v is x squared. So it's x squared squared. Can we simplify that? We can. A little bit. So we've got negative x squared tan x. The second term just becomes minus because nothing really for the point of having the brackets. But we've got minus 2x log of cos x. And our denominator can become x to the power of 4. Now as has already appeared in the quotient rule. We can sometimes take a common factor of x from the numerator and that will cancel with the denominator. So just to show that in a couple of lines, um, we've got a minus sign in both terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a negative x as a common factor, which gives us x tan x minus 2 log of cos x divided by x to the power of 4 and then I'm going to divide through by x so that disappears and that goes down to 3 and I'm going to write my minus sign just at the beginning so we've got negative um, well what I could do is I should just write negative 1 over x cubed and then do x tan x minus 2 times the natural log of cos x. And that saves me writing a whole big fraction. It doesn't matter if you do that and you've got a big fraction line in the x cubed, but one of the ways we could get around it is just introduce that fraction at the front, 1 over uh, x cubed. So, there's the two examples, 14 and 15. That will allow you hopefully to tackle a few more complex differentiation problems involving the log function.